This is the Earth Science Classroom. Hi, and welcome to the Earth Science Classroom. We're looking at plate tectonics playlist and a series of videos today and looking at the Wilson cycle in particular. So this is an awesome mechanism that this professor, this gentleman named J. Tuzo Wilson in 1966, he basically looked at seafloor spreading and continental drift and the paleomantism from Vina Matthews and Morley and within a couple of years started doing his own research experiments and took basically applied seafloor spreading and he also looked at Pangaea, the supercontinent from roughly 250 million years ago and he put them all together and thought, okay, what mechanism, what process is going to connect? And basically his mechanism is a step-by-step -step guide, a, a rift area, a rift zone, the point where there's going to be movement away and spreading, okay, a spreading center. And then there's gonna be a, an ocean created. And then there's going to be some sort of closure and a subduction zone and then it's going to close and there's going to be a foot closure so basically it's like a, a start a middle and an end of an ocean and this takes into account the global connectivity of plate tectonics it's that holistic overview it's that general idea of how the earth's crust deforms is built and then moves across the surface very slowly over time and it's that connecting theory and hypothesis that really connects Wegener back from 1912, where he started, through to Hess in 1963, and then obviously with his, his theory in 66, really solidified the idea of plate tectonics and boundaries and margins, both active margins and passive margins. We'll get to that in the next part of the video but this is the kind of like intro part of where he went with using the evidence and new ideas that came out from Hess and from Brian Matthews and Morley. All right so the Wilson cycle is basically a, a four-stage process and the first stage is shown here is called rifting. Now rifting is the process of splitting or diverging or moving things apart. Now we start with this consistent, solid, connected craton, which is a, a very stable landmass that hasn't changed for a very long time, and it kind of stays where it is. And you can also use this as the supercontinent Pangaea. Now, Pangaea existed for a really kind of a short time, uh, between 280 million years ago to about 180 million years ago. And you had the connection of Laurentia and Gondwana. Uh, Laurentia was the was Eurasia in North America mostly, and Gondwana it was the South America, Africa, Antarctica, Australasia, and the Indian subcontinent. And this and this huge landmass all connected. And the Wilson cycle describes how that huge supercontinent would break up. Like what would cause it to break up and what would happen as it's breaking up and what are the different parts of geology that we can see today in various layers of bedding and how these were formed because certain formations in geology are only formed certain ways and we can use these to, to like trace back the history of an ocean or a landmass or let's say a margin whether it be a passive margin or an active margin we can date it back. This happens where we have the layers of the xenosphere, lithosphere, and the crust. So obviously the moho there, separating the crust and the mantle. And we have the xenosphere, which don't forget is the weak sphere with the L, B, Z. And I have videos on these layers in more detail if you want to go back and watch them. And look at the upper mantle in general. So you have your convection currents. So if you have our rising magma, let's say it comes up here, it's going to push on the lithosphere and it's going to make it kind of like bulge up and uplift so this whole area does uplift with the immense pressure of the built the underneath convection currents and upwelling or the uprising of magmatic material this will mostly be basaltic very mafic and it's going to be not very viscous or low viscosity so it's going to cause this and it's going to put a lot of pressure on this part of that super constant, that connected crust, that stable craton, and it's going to 
have some sort of impact right here as the upwelling mantle or asthenosphere starts to push on this rock. Now, solid cold crust is very brittle, which means that if you apply pressure at a certain point, a certain threshold, that rock is going to break, fracture, uh, rupture. And this lithosphere is more ductile, which means in terms of deformation, ductile means that it can be bent. It can be applied pressure and force over a certain area and it can bend and it will stay bent. That means ductile, okay? Whereas the asthenosphere, that's more plastic and that's more elastic in nature where like a plastic bottle where you can, you can move it, you can deform it, you can change its shape, but it'll go back to its original shape of a plastic bottle, okay? Also depends on the force applied. The crust is brittle, the sphere is more ductile, and then you've got the elastic plastic, um, <laughs> elastic, a sphere, which has the convection currents working to produce upwelling and rising magma in this part. So once this has taken place, and over some amount of time, that consistent upwelling is going to do two things. First, it's going to progressively move that stable craton, start to move the left-hand side this way, the right-hand side this way, and start to spread, split, or move away and try to break into two pieces this once single super confident, uh, and we use Pangaea, we also use Rodinia, or other ones in the past, but Pangaea is most recent. What you're looking at is the first part, first step is the forcing movement by the uprising magma underneath. And then what happen is, is there is some sort of depression right here and a full graben is produced. That is a term, a German name term given to a fault, a part of the land that actually gets subsided or gets put a drop down lower. Because think about it, if you're pulling, you know, intentional forces, and intentional forces are being applied to this stable supercontinent, this large landmass, you know, and it's being pulled apart, the rock or the crust that is in the center right here, it is being left behind and it's going to drop down and form a graven. A half graven is just on one side. This is a full graven because it happens on both sides at the same time. And then this part of the crust, be it continental, thick or thin continental crust, depends on the location, it's gonna be even thinner. So this is a thinner crust right here. And that allows, it's like a multiplier effect, a positive feedback loop, allowing more and more of the uprising magma to melt or burn or move through the thinner crust, thus again, causing this uh, movement to accelerate, thus pulling apart the once super confident into two separate pieces or two crusts, all right? Or as we know them, continents we're at stage two now stage two is called connell drift and seafloor spreading so the riftings happened the riftings occurred the gravens formed and this basin that has been created by the forcing apart of that once stable supercontinent or craton by the asthenosphere uprising is now growing it's growing larger and larger and larger and wider forming a new ocean basin so this could be the atlantic ocean which started to form around 180 million years ago with the split of South America and Africa first. And then later on, about 150 to 135 million years ago was a split of North America and Africa. So there was a uh, you know, sequential over a long period of time split and formation of the, the newly born Atlantic Ocean. But before there was the Atlantic and before there was Pangaea, there was the closing of an ancient ocean. It was called Iapetus, which is spelt I-A-P-E-T-U-S. And fun fact, this uh, name Iapetus comes from the Greek mythology. Iapetus was the father of Atlas, and Atlas was the Greek god assigned to hold up the heavens and the skies. And it was pretty much between 400 million years ago up to the closing point of 300 million years ago. So there's different oceans. The Atlantic is the most recent, we all know. So let me fast forward a few million years, perhaps. The consistent point here where we have the, the rifting 
and the constant spreading center. So maybe there would be a ridge right here that Hess found, but you have this mature ocean basin that has grown and widened with the spreading center, with the Connell drift lithospheric plate that carries the crust, be it the, the brand new ocean crust and the older ancient Connell crust. So now we're starting to see why the continents are a lot older, you know, oldest is 3.8 billion years old, whereas the ocean crust is usually gets about 180 million years and then starts to uh, subduct uh, at the active margins. So it doesn't get to the point where it can be that old compared to a continental uh, crust. So you have this ridge, perhaps, which signifies where the the upwind is and the and the uh, spring center is and you know the mid ocean ridges are a great example of this and we use the atlantic as the example because hess used saw the atlantic plus the pacific and you have this mature ocean basin and this is stage two basically so it's the larger portion than just the stage one rifting all right so stage three is called closure and subduction so also you can figure out what happens here is that the ocean basin is matured it has spread to a great width, Atlantic Ocean, you know, two, 3,000 miles wide with the mid-ocean ridge right smack in the middle. And you have these convection currents. Now, the convection currents will dictate the direction and the speed of the above lying crust of the sphere plate. And what you have is, I have drawn this, this direction or this substance, this, this downward motion of the crust and lithosphere indicating a subduction area. Now, subduction means to go under, to go under something. Now, in this case, the subduction can be created by a difference in density. If the ocean crust usually is basalt, is denser, so the average uh, is density is 3.0 grams per centimeter cubed, and it widens enough that it gets to a point where it starts to collide or, or have, have a collision, a convergent boundary, which would be right here, convergent boundary, whereby it's denser, heavier, and it's going to subduct under the lighter of one it's meeting. And the same thing over here. Or it could be hitting a different kind of crust, which is mostly going to be continental, and that would be a, a lot thicker and lighter, and that's going to flow and also cause subduction. So. It happens in, in various situations based on density, thickness, composition of the crust, and also the speed of which it's moving. Also, it happens over a long, 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 long period of time. So this is stage three. And it can happen once it starts to subduct, then the, the ocean basin, the ocean width, it kind of stops growing. There is some sort of equilibrium or balance that is attained by the birth, the birth of new crustal plates here at the ridge, and the death, the death of the the crustal plates, the crustal rock as it subducts down deeper. Now it gets down to about 150 kilometers, which is in the uh, low velocity zone in the cenosphere down here, and this is where the subducting cold slab, we call it a slab, as it subducts is going to release a lot of the water molecules that it gets from the ocean that's above it. And it's gonna lower the melting point and allow the, the solid rock to start to partially melt and go over that solidus line and produce melt and magma that would eventually form some sort of volcanism on the surface of the crust. So again, very nice symmetry, very nice mechanism to the growth of the ocean and eventually the, the death of the ocean crust. So now we're on to stage four, which is Connell collision. So what's happened is there has been the removal or the movement of the asthenospheric uprising. So there's no more uprising, as you can see. What you're looking at are the convection currents that are basically converging. So we have a convergence or coming together of the convection currents, thus bringing with them the Connell crust moving towards each other. So you have a towards each other situation and eventually you're gonna get a collision of two continents that's gonna have this ocean 
that is going to progressively get smaller okay and narrower and you're going to have this subduction zone on either side or just one side but this is probably easier just to show one of both sides that happens simultaneously concurrently and over time this ocean is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and you're going to have a collision so what happens is the cool thing is that this is what happened with the subcontinent of india broke away from antarctica and gondwana and slowly but surely made its way up through the now known Indian Ocean up towards the equator and it smashed into Eurasia creating the orogeny that we know of as the Himalayan Mountains and the cool thing is that the Eurasian block basically was strong and it made India kind of crumple and that uh, formed fold mountains and orogeny forming the Himalayan Mountains, and the um, Tetra Sea, which was, you know, historically, you know, there between Eurasia and Gowana, and India, the so kind of India kind of went through that ancient ocean and closed it up, and the part between India and Eurasia, as it came together, these sediments, these sediments that were on the ocean floor, these, these sedimentary strata, limestone and sandstone, were then pushed up as the Himalayan mountain orogeny was forming and actually layered into Mount Everest. So Mount Everest is, you know, currently the highest altitude, highest elevation point on the earth, 29,000 feet roughly. But however, at that altitude, you get layers of limestone and sandstone basically transported ancient ocean floor up basically five miles into the air. And we know that these cemetery rocks can only be formed at the bottom of an ocean environment. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on earth science.